Yeah, I was just like preparing a bit last minute because I jumped into it not that long ago and didn't know I had to prepare something to speak about. So there were basically a lot of questions. So, but yeah, as I mentioned, I was part of Extinction Rebellion from the start back in May 2018 when we decided to like try to organize a rebellion against the inaction on climate change and ecolog ecological crisis. And it's been in some ways quite a big experiment to some way. We always wanted to try out something new, wanted to add something new to the campaigning climate or to the wider movement. And so it's been yeah, amazing to see how much has been ca catching on. And I think there's also has been a space for like a lot of things to emerge, a lot of things to come from. So from last autumn, we were building towards this like international rebellion. When we first started, we say we're going to do a first iteration of rebellion back in November 2018 and getting everyone prepared for that. But before that was going on, we already said, when we get everyone out of the streets, we're going to say, we're going to do this again, we're going to do another iteration of rebellion. It's not over once, we need to like, keep going and keep trying things out. So this term over, the second iteration of rebellion, and I think from now on, there will be a lot of different areas of work where I think XR can contribute to things, or can do things. One thing I'm involved with is the XR Youth Network, and there's three people in the audience with their hands waved up, so you can speak to them later if you want to know more about that. And we've been working since the past few months in creating a kind of space for young people within XR and developing more kind of youth voice and youth leadership. And we're currently working on plans for how all kind of students and young people have been here in London doing things the last few weeks and like take back what they've been doing here and keep working and keep organizing in their schools and universities. And we're also working on building collaborations with other youth climate groups. There's also an emerging international solidarity network we have been worked on for some time and we've been working on how does Extinction Rebellion work with groups who have been essentially rebelling against extinction for decades or centuries. It's nothing new, people have been doing these things in the Global South for a very long time and we, in order to like get anywhere on this question on a global level, we really need to yeah, develop how we work with groups who have already been working on this for a very long time. On, there's also a lot of things that have been going on at local level in Extinction Rebellion, like loads of councils have been declaring climate emergency, which will be like one step towards like, the development we want to see with governments and local councils telling the truth about climate change. And I think that development has been happening. I heard the other day that the Oxford Council were going to implement a citizens' assembly on climate emergency. And that might be the kind of next step. If we don't get a national citizens' assembly anytime soon, we might get a few in local councils or in local districts, which can help show how it's being done and why it is a good thing to do. And another thing, I saw a message on my phone just like 15 minutes ago that apparently the French president, president Macron had called for a citizens' assembly, national one in France, to deal with environmental and social justice. On the national level in the UK, I think there will be some effort put into negotiation with the government. I have heard that there has been, yeah, people from the government who had offered to speak with us. I'm not sure how that goes forward because we have had the intention of doing the negotiations in public and in a very public space. So I think that is still ongoing, but I think there will be some energy being put into keep on doing that, keep on negotiating with the government and see how much we can bring our demands through after this iteration of rebellion. And Another thing which has also recently come up is that I know there's several people connected with Extinction Rebellion who are, as a kind of independent thing, trying to run for European Parliament, which again, some people in the audience know about, they so you're sitting there, as another way of like bringing across this message around the climate emergency and using the platform of the European Parliament election. 
not as an XR project, because Extinction Berlin is not really involved in electoral politics, we're focusing on calling for a citizens' assembly, but as a way to like keep putting the message out there around climate and ecological emergency. And in terms of actions, international actions, also known as a kind of grassroots network of uh, climate and social justice groups who are planning a wave of sustained uprising in this autumn to coincide with European negotiations on climate change. So I think it's pretty likely that it will be another kind of iteration of rebellion, so to speak, this coming autumn. And it might be, I'm not sure how much this will actually happen, but I think it's probably quite likely that the Extinction Rebellion groups will join in with what is happening. Because we have been working a lot with these kind of iterations. It might look differently, we might not try to get everyone down to London again, or we might, but I think it's pretty likely that we will take part in another like sustained like, iteration of rebellion, so to call it, non-violent civil disobedience this autumn. And yeah, I think that's it. It feels like it's a quite interesting mix of a lot of different things, a lot of different elements trying to like come together in all being like kind of connected to Extinction Berlin in one way or another. Another really interesting thing is um, the work that Polly Higgins have been doing around ecocide law, which have got a massive boost like recently since Polly unfortunately passed away like last week. And I think a lot of people are quite touched by that. But it's also, I spoke to, I was at her honoring a recognition back in Stroud early this morning and a lot of people there are like extremely radiant because they feel like ecocide law making ecocide the destruction of ecosystems and international crime against peace is not so much the thing that the thing that Polly Higgins is doing anymore because Polly Higgins has passed away but it's now the thing that a lot of other people are feeling like they're taking ownership of because it's no, no one else that does it anymore. And I think that's also a really interesting potential thing that you can also get like, tied into this quite beautiful mix of different elements and campaigning areas that are around and connected to Extinction Rebellion. <laughs>